And I think over the course of this course so far, uh, we've talked about pretty much all of these options, minus maybe the inflate, deflate, expand, and contract. To put it simply, inflate just pushes along the surface normal, so when we were doing our pillow here, if I drop down to subdivision level one, let's go out of edit mode, say always switch it, control N. Let's do another micro mesh here. I'm gonna grab a plane, or you know what, let's grab a star, drag it under canvas, go into edit mode. Let's go all the way down to initialize. One, 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 Q grid. Let's go into sub tool. Let's append an arrow. I'm gonna take this arrow and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees by holding down shift. Hit W to go into gizmo. Pull this out front here. Let's go ahead and scale this down. A bit and I'll hold a, a control alt and grab these front verts and we're just gonna pull this out so you can see a very obvious arrow. So I'm gonna take this top plane here and we're gonna say geometry and we're gonna say subtool merge down. So now this is all one subtool here. Let's hold down control shift and make that its own, its own obvious poly group here. And again, this is gonna fit perfectly within that one-to-one -one square here because when we go to draw grid size of one, and we turn on Z, you're going to see it fits that grid there. In fact, if you want to see this grid a little bit clearer, you can go in here to draw, scroll down until you get to modifiers, and then change this frame opacity here. We'll just crank that up to one, so you can very clearly see that frame opacity. You're going to see this automatically fits in that space, so we can use this as a micro poly. So if we go back to that pillow here, and we go down to geometry, dynamic, turn micro poly on, hold down control, select the plane with the arrow on it. You're going to see this is going to show us our surface normals. So essentially when you do an inflate or a deflate, it's going to take that geometry and just push along where that normal is pointing. So that's why if we just have a plane here when we say make poly mesh 3D and we grab Turn on dynamic, turn down smooth, micro poly on, hold down control, select the plane with the arrow. You're going to see these are all pointing in a straight direction. They're just pointing this way. So when I run inflate, gravity off, floor collision off, and run the simulation, the whole plane just moves in that direction. However, if I go in here and use the move brush, and give these other directions to push in. Now when I run inflate, it'll start doing things. Same thing with deflate. It'll start pushing in that other direction and it'll start deforming the mesh. If I undo that, and let's go ahead and turn micro poly off. If I go through here and I do expand, that's gonna look at relationships between edges. So if I do expand and run the simulation, it's just going to grow outwards. And if I do contract, exact same thing, it's gonna run inwards. And of course you can slow these down if you just crank that amount down and then run the simulation. Now you can also do it in one axis, so we can say expand or contract in the x-axis, and you're going to see the x-axis is again left to right, so if we contract here it's going to contract that way. Same thing with expand, if we expand in just the x-axis it'll just grow in that direction. And again it's trying to maintain the surface area but allowing some stretching because you're allowing it to expand. In fact, up here is allow expand and allow shrink. So if you hit BTC for transpose cloth, if I go through here and collapse this down, it's gonna eventually fold in on itself to maintain, let's go and turn off floor, to maintain that surface area. However, if I say allow expand or allow shrink, I can shrink this and it'll allow it. Or I can say allow expand and it'll allow me to scale it out. If I don't have those on and I try to expand again, it's going to try to maintain this overall surface area. So this is a good practice if you just want to like mask the top of this and turn on expand in the x direction and see how it behaves or expand in the y direction or expand in the x and z direction which is left and right and front to back. And front to back is not going to do anything in this case because these edge relationships don't have anything in this direction. So again, expand in X and Y is going to do the exact same thing as X, Y, and Z because there's nothing happening in the Z direction. However, if I go through here, and let's go to Unmatch Mesh Center, and I collapse this in a little bit, now that we have folds, if I expand in X, Y, and Z, now it'll grow in the 
x, y, and z direction. And of course you can also run this in three dimensions here. So if we grab a cylinder, make polymesh 3D. Let's go down here to polygroups, say group by normals, control shift click this green area, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Let's go ahead and mask the top of this. And we'll also go down here to turn on dynamic. We'll keep smooth subdivid two. And now if I do expand in the X, Y, and Z, you're gonna see it's gonna expand all this out. If I just do it in the X and Z direction, or if I just do it in the Y direction, you're gonna get much more, you're gonna get much different results. And remember, you can also use your transpose cloth to go through here, and you can have expand turned on while you deform the cloth, or expand and inflate. And you can move this up and down and it'll eventually begin to deform the surface based on expand and inflate. We can do X, Y, and Z. You can use scale and you can contract in a single direction while you inflate and expand, or you can say contract while you contract and that'll give you a different result. It's gonna start pushing in on itself in the X, Y, and Z direction as you scale this up or as you twist it or as you rotate it. So just remember, as you have these things on and you're manipulating your mesh over here, it's going to have an effect. And if you remember, if you go back here to unmasked, now the masked portion is going to deform and the rest of the geometry is gonna follow with it. In fact, we can go to our Z modeler brush, BZM, and we can go ahead and say, hover over an edge, hold down spacebar, and say transpose poly loop. And now I can tap this poly loop here, go to unmatched mesh center, I can go through here and I can close this or I can move this in and you're gonna see, I can go through here and manipulate this cloth as needed and have the rest of it simulate and follow. Same thing for the bottom here. Now, if you remember, uh, I have transpose here and if I just tap because we have preferences, gizmo 3D, tap to exit gizmo mode, I can just tap off, go ahead and unmask this, go to unmask mesh center and then use this to drive the rest of my mesh here.